Hello everybody, good morning everybody, depending on where you are all over the world. My name is Ron Cantor and um, uh, it is great to be with you guys. Um, uh, the reason I wanted to come on live this morning is because, uh, and I'm just going to check the news real quick because things just change so quickly, but um, I'm hoping uh, that uh, 13 hostages uh, well, well, it says 4 p.m. That would have been 15 minutes ago. I thought it was 4.30. But uh, Times of Israel, Israel awaits release of first 13 hostages from Gaza expected at 4 p.m. So they must have written that uh, before 4 p.m. because it's just after 4 p.m. Uh, there is no um, news of these 13 out of 242. 13 out of 242. Um, that they've been released. Let me just check uh, another news source and see what is going on there. But this is a big deal. This is a um, it, it is a spiritual war. And again, no one at this point. Uh, and again, it, uh, preparations are completed here. It, it's not like they're going to be released and we're going to know in two seconds because they have to. There's a process. They're going to go to a hospital. I, I think they're being released in Egypt in the Red Cross. And but but um, I want to talk to you uh, about this whole thing. But before I do that, uh, I can't ignore the fact that it is Thanksgiving weekend. I uh, we did just get to America. We. Um, have, you know, after October 7th, our lives, like many Israelis, were turned upside down. But because we do work in humanitarian aid, it really was, um, you know, over a month of every day, just intense, intense uh, pressure. I mean, I don't even know uh, emotionally what, what what we have suffered, you know, what type of ministry we need, I Ilana and I, um, much less the people who have actually lost family members. I was watching a video last night on CNN where they were interviewing a, a, a brother of a woman who was killed and her her children are are hostages. So, you know, you just can't even imagine that this trauma, the PTSD, the and now these kids coming home. So um, this is a time really to be in prayer, to believe God for healing for these children. But I said all that to say, uh, that it is Thanksgiving weekend. I did, but it's one of the reasons we're in America. Um, we have a few ministry dates as well, uh, but it was so good. You know, I, I love uh, Richmond where I grew up. I really do. I love Israel. Israel is home now, but I love to be in Richmond as well. It is a beautiful city. Um, they are planning, from what I understand, either it's today or Sunday, a pro-Palestinian march uh, right near where we stay. So, um Pray that I'll be disciplined to just uh, stay out of it. It's kind of hard because it's just such nonsense and such such lies that, th that these people believe. Most of them are ignorant. They're not bad people. They just they they're repeating what they heard. They don't do you know research for themselves. Like some guy wrote on on Twitter today. You know this thing didn't begin on October seventh. Let's go back. You know uh, seventy five years or uh, twenty three to the creation of the state of Israel. 1948. I'm like, wait, why do we have to go back to 1948? Let's go back to 1936. That is when the Peel Commission uh, suggested to the UN that they take the remaining 20% of what is historic Palestine. Historic Palestine has nothing to do with Arabs, has nothing to do with Arabic or Arab ethnicity. It's a name that goes back 2,000 years. It was given by the Romans. It is funny that when we say the word Palestine today, we... Uh, uh, we tend to think it has to do with an Arab country that once was, uh, but it, no, never, never was, never is. And so they were going to take 20% of historic Palestine, 80% they already gave to, to Jordan after, and, and hey, can we, friend, the guy who wrote that, let's not go back to 48, let's not go back to 36, let's go back to 1917, when the Turks were defeated by the Allied forces, and then uh, Great Britain said, well, we're, we're, our goal, because we're, they were then, it's just, people don't know this stuff. At the by the way, bring them home. Bring them home now. Machzirim otam habaita achshav. So I proudly wore this on the airplane uh, in London, in in New York City, as we arrived. And um, 
I, I think I told you guys the other day I was wearing a kippah. I don't typically wear a kippah. I'm not an Orthodox Jew. I'm a Messianic Jew. But I, as I'm hearing about people in London being attacked for wearing a kippah, it just, you know, I, no. <laughs> you know, so I wore it on, on, you know, the airplane as we got off and as we went to the hotel. And then the hotel people warned me, you should take that off. You're putting yourself in danger. And, and, um, and I didn't. Um, and then if you haven't seen, you know, I was able to speak on Sunday at a rally of several, I don't know how, they told me 10,000 people, maybe it was 5,000, I don't know exactly, it was a lot of people, and a tiny little stage, huge sound system, and uh, I had five minutes and gave it uh, my all. Um, you can see that on, on, it's on Instagram, it's on my Facebook, and I hope, if you haven't seen that, I hope you do, let it build faith in you, because um, I said something and, and I shared this the other day. I said something at the end of that. I wrote down the speech. I don't ever write down my a, a speech. Yet. Like right now, I'm just talking to you. You know, I don't have a, there's no teleprompter. Um, but when I know that I have a short amount of time, I will use written uh, speech because I don't, if not, I can just go for hours and hours and hours. And I wanted to be respectful to those who had invited me. So I wrote everything down. At the very begin, at the very end, I said, uh, and, you know, this says, bring them home now. I just, as I'm writing this speech down, I just felt a, like a shift in my spirit. I wrote, instead of that, I wrote at the very last words were, we, because it was a gathering of believers, we speak to Hamas in the spirit and we say, let God's people go. You know, 10,000 people saying that together. It was, it was a powerful moment. Within 24 hours, they're talking about this hostage exchange, which we're going to talk about. Is it good? Is it not good? I want to, I want to talk about that because there's a lot of opinions. And, um, you know, if you're watching me, maybe you're concerned about what I think. Um, and if not, that's okay. Um, so today at 4.30 or 4 or right now in Israel, it's 9 a.m., what time is it now? 9.23 here. So maybe they're free. Maybe these 13 have been, you know, right now they're in the hands of the Red Cross. I don't know. Um, but Lord, we just ask that these 13 out of 242, that they come home today, that they come on. Let's agree in prayer, Father God. We speak to every enemy that would try and keep them from coming home, Lord God. We just think of the families that are going to be reunited today. And God, we we know that PTSD is a real thing. We know that trauma is real. But we also know that, know that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's freedom. So we pray for these children, for these women, that they would experience freedom and joy. And in, 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 in that you would heal them of all trauma, O oh God, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. So um, this came about, you know, obviously, I'm sure the politicians have been working on this for quite a while. Um, but I want to finish up what I was saying earlier. This is why, this is why sometimes I write down what I'm going to say. Um, I said, let's not go back to 48. Let's not go back to 36. Let's go back to 1917. That's when Great Britain, in, in the San Remo Conference, that was 1920, the purpose of the San Remo Conference was for the victors. By the way, they're in wars. There's victors and there's losers, right? Winners, losers. And in, in World War I, the winners were, you know, the United States, Great Britain, and the, and the Allied Forces, France. And the losers were the Ottoman Empire, the, the Turks, the Germans, right? Big time losers, the Germans. I don't mean the if you're German, I'm not saying you are big time losers. I love you. I bless you. I'm saying that that it was a huge defeat that led to the tanking of the economy in Germany at such a level that that it really made the the the, the ground ripe for somebody like Adolf Hitler to come and, and to restore the honor of the German people because the German people were paying reparations. Uh, after the war, and so they had their economy was tanked. Beyond that, they're paying reparations when they don't have the money. The, the influ in, inflation was through the roof, and along comes Adolf Hitler, and, and you blame the Jews. So um, Thailand is announcing twelve. I can't read the rest, of the rest of it because it flipped, but it just said Thailand is announcing twelve. I assume that means twelve hostages from Thailand have been freed. Um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Nobody should have to be a hostage to this demonic entity called Hamas. So, God, we thank you for the Thai 
these are Thai workers that they leave their families and they come and they work in the farms of Israel. And um, they, they got caught up there in the South. That's where we grow a lot of our stuff. And next, you know, they had it was Saturday morning, next thing you know, they're hostages. So they're free now. Uh, what did I say, 12? Uh, praise the Lord. Here it is. Let's read this. Thailand announces 12 of its hostages in Gaza have been released. Um, yes, uh, Bangkok says they believe 26 citizens were taken hostages. So, you know, the good people of Hamas uh, have released 12 of them. Um, like, like Hamas, like what do you, they're, they're Thai. They're not, they're not Zionist. But they're, but these are sick people we're dealing with. We're, we're dealing with demon-possessed people. Um, so, trying to finish this, you go all the way back to 1917, the Great Britain writes at the end of World War II, when pretty much France and Great Britain and other nations had control of the former Ottoman Empire. That would include include Jerusalem, Israel. That would include Syria, Lebanon, much of the Middle East, Jordan. And they said, it's our endeavor to take ancient Palestine and create a homeland for the Jewish people. Praise God. No, th thank you. Thank you, Great Britain. It's called the Balfour Declaration. And then in three years later, in, in 20, uh, 1920, at the San Remo Conference, why did they have that conference? They brought the Allied forces together in order to decide what are we going to do with all these little areas that the Ottomans once ruled, the Turks. And so they created, uh, and this is how, you probably don't even know this, and I love you, I'm not, I don't, I'm not speaking down to you, I'm just saying that news never talks about this. If you don't, if you're not proactive in learning history, you're not going to learn it any other way, but, but it was over the next 20, 30 years that Lebanon becomes a nation, Syria becomes a nation, Jordan becomes a nation, these are all new nations, Iraq becomes a nation, and Israel re-becomes a nation. And so Great Britain promised, you know, so uh, the guy who wrote that on Twitter, I can't remember his name, you know, we don't need to go back to 48. We don't need to go back to 30. So let's go back to 17. That is when, in, in the San Remo Conference, they took the Balfour Declaration and they made it international law. It became international law in 2020 to take, it, at least inside of historic Palestine, which is all of Jordan and present-day Israel, and create a Jewish homeland. That became law. But then in 1936, you know, after they'd already given 80% to the Jordanians, 1936, P Peel Commission said, well, let's take the remaining 20%. We're going to create two states, one for Palestinian Arabs and one for Palestinian Jews. <gasps> Did I just say Palestinian Jews? Yes, because Palestinian had nothing to do with ethnicity. You had Palestinian Jews, Arabs, anybody who lived there. It was just a region. It was not an Arab ethnicity. It never has been. So I will debate anybody on the history of this issue. You know, if there's any human being that is willing in a reasonable atmosphere, whether you are, you know, Arab, Palestinian, Muslim, or just a left wing, uh, uh, well, I was going to say something mean, but I won't. If you are <laughs> just believe that Israel is horrible and you're a, a left wing college professor, I will debate you. I have no fear because I have history on my side. I have truth on my side. And I'm not an apologist for Israel. We've made mistakes. I can, I can tell you a lot of mistakes that we've made. We're not a perfect nation. But on this issue, on this issue of our, we, we are fighting every day for our existence. And you guys have tried to turn it around when they're, when the, the Middle East is 99.9, .9, a little bit less, 99.5% Arab controlled, less than 1% Jewish controlled. Can we have our 1% please? 1%? That would be two. 1%? All right, so, I mean, I could do history with you all day long. And so what happened? Did, did the Arabs accept peace in 1936? No, they said absolutely not, because part of that peace deal would mean there'd be a Jewish state too. So in 1947, there was another one, the, the partition plan by the UN. It passed, 33 to 13. And the Arabs said, no, we don't want a nation unless we can have all the land. We are not willing to tolerate a Jewish nation. And so that's what happened. We go to 67, when, when, when Egypt and Syria was trying to destroy Israel. I mean, I, we could do this all day long. History is on our side. But let's talk about the hostages, because right now what's happening is that we have agreed, Israel has agreed to, re, to um, release 150 uh, prisoners. Um, some of them are detainees. Uh, all of them are women and children. 
And by children, I'm, I mean, they, they might be 17, 16. Um, you know, there's one woman who lives in a neighborhood outside of Jerusalem. It's a very controversial neighborhood where, where Palestinians say it's theirs. Jewish people say it's, it's theirs. And we can go through all the history of that and how it, why it's that contour. I won't do it right now. But, but an Arab woman stabbed a Jewish woman not long ago. And she went to jail just a few weeks ago. She's getting out of jail. She lives in the same... So the woman whom she stabbed, this, this Palestinian attempted murderer is going to get to go home. Same apartment building? Same neighborhood? Can you imagine seeing her? Hey! Hey! Yeah, that's nuts! But that's what we're doing. We are... Um, uh, Egypt is... Egypt is confirming that 13 Israelis have been free. The first group of Israeli hostages said to be in the hands of the Red Cross and on their way out of Gaza. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Just think of the families. The, you know, some of these kids, they probably don't even have parents anymore. Some of them, we don't know the situations. We'll be li we're listening to the stories all day long about who. We don't know their names or identities. The families obviously do. It's been a rough six weeks, seven weeks. And thank God these kids are going home. So we are, le we are releasing 150 bad people. They are releasing 50 innocent people. Now, I heard this reporter, I don't even know her name. I'm not a violent person. But, well, I won't even go there. I mean, I just, the stupidity of her question, she should not be on TV. I'm going to play, I, you, you're going to be able to hear this. Uh, but basically, I'm going to play it for you, and hopefully it'll come across. But, um... Her, her argument is this. We are releasing 150 Palestinians. They are releasing 50 Israelis. She's saying, don't you value Palestinian lives? Like, do you think an Israeli life is worth three Palestinian lives? No, it's actually worth a thousand. Why is it worth a thousand? Because the Gilad Shalit, yeah, that's what Hamas, understand something. Listen to me. This is not Israeli, you, you not smart person, <laughs> you ignorant person. This is not Israel devaluing the Palestinians. It is the Hamas devaluing the Palestinians. Because when we got Gilad, Gilad Shalit free about 10 or 11 years ago, we had to give up 1,000 terrorists to get one Israel. So, so... The answer to your question is no. We do not think that we are better. Hamas thinks. Hamas values one Israeli soldier as worth a thousand of their own. That's how much they devalue their own people. But for you to ask such a stupid question to an Israeli, like we're, don't you, we, do you think we're coming up with these numbers? All right, listen to it. I'm going to let you listen. I was speaking to a hostage negotiator this morning. He made the comparison between the 50 hostages, hostages that Hamas has promised, um, promised to release, as opposed to the 150 prisoners that are Palestinians. That... Oh. I'm not sure what just happened there. Let's see if we can get that back. I tried to turn it around so you could see it, and it... Ah, it's because I'm live, that's why... All right, you're gonna. I'm gonna have to put that in. Uh, mm, where can I find that? Okay, I'll just have to tell it to you. It's not letting me do both both at the same time. But um, let's see if uh, that bad. no, I tried. No, 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 no. Okay, it's okay. Uh, but basically, the guy's response is brilliant. Go to my Instagram. It's on. Um, uh, I think it is on my stories right now, um, and. Uh, the guy, I mean, he destroyed her. He's like, what a dumb question. Do you think that we're, don't you think we would rather do one for one? Don't you think we would rather release 50? I mean, what a dumb question. Do you, are you, are you evil? Like, no matter what, if, 
If an Israeli gives a sandwich to a hungry person, well, then it's probably poisonous. Because Israelis are obviously incapable of doing anything kind. So if the deal is three to one, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Why is it three to one? If the deal is three to one, three Palestinians for an Israeli, do you think we're setting those terms? Do you think we're the ones saying to Hamas, you know, we devalue you people so low. We, we're going to... We, we are going to release three of your people for every one of ours because we're so... No, you silly human being. They're setting those numbers. The, the, the question is, for me, is why is it only three? You know, Gilad Shalit, it was 1,000 to one. Now it's three to one. What does that tell us? It tells us that, that, that Hamas is desperate. Hamas is absolutely desperate. They've been decimated over the past uh, six weeks, our Israeli soldiers. And listen, I, you know this. If you've watched, followed us, we have spent hours and hours and hours with the soldiers. We've done cookouts with them. We, we bought equipment. And these are, pre these are not like the terrorists they're fighting. You go look at some, you will Google, you know, Hamas terrorists. I mean, these are people who love blood, who love rape, who love murder, who, who, who commit, I forget the word for it, Sexual acts with dead bodies. Necrophilia, I think is what it's called. I mean, that's, that's, mess that's your religion? That is your religion, bro? That you get to sleep, have sex with a dead body? That's what they're, and I'm with these precious Israeli soldiers, and they're the salt of the earth. 19, 20, 21. So, um, they're, they're obviously... Hamas is, is being decimated. You know, their, their naval commander was killed last night. They're losing commander after commander. It, it really, this war has gone far better than anybody in Israel expected it to go because 2014 was not good. And I won't get into all the reasons right now. All I know is that the fact that they're willing to deal three to one and they're just women and children on the Palestinian side. Like in Gilad Shalit, we, uh, um, Sinwar, who is the leader of the military wing of Hamas, we had to release him. He's the one causing all these problems right now. We had to release him. He was one of the thousand. And now they're saying, well, we're going to do three to one and we're only asking for women and children. That means they are desperate. That means they're running for their lives. That means they're hiding in their tunnels. That means that they're being decimated. The Shifa hospital is now under Israeli control after they, uh, uh, which is where their, their headquarters are underneath in the tunnels. So now the question it, it, that has arisen from many, in, and I've, I've heard many very smart people, people I respect, saying this is a bad deal. This is a bad deal. Israel should not do it. Listen, there is no good deal here. We we lost on October the 7th. For whatever reason, we were not ready. We, we were blinded. The, the, the Hamas had prepared for it, and they prepared well. They came over, dressed as Israeli soldiers. You know, a lot of people died because they thought that they were encountering Israeli soldiers, and that they got closer, they began to shoot at them. We know that from eyewitness testimony of those who got away. They did, they did it well. They're terrorists. They're, they're nuts. They're bloodthirsty. They're demonic. But they did this well. And they ended up with the spoils. They ended up with the 242. And, and what the problem with us in Israel, we're human. We care about our children. You see, the leader of Hamas, the Hananya, the political leader in Qatar, or Qatar, or however they want to pronounce it, who lives in a luxury apartment, flies around in a private jet while his people are starving. Uh, he says that the blood of the Palestinian people belong to Hamas to use for the revolution. They don't care. The 150 that are being released, they could care less if they die tomorrow. Could not care less if they die tomorrow. They don't care about the Palestinian people. And now, now what's happening is they've lost control. They had control over the masses. And what is happening, if you see, go to YouTube, you can see the videos, Instagram, of Palestinians in Gaza saying, enough of Hamas. They are the problem. They have ruined us. They're not crying out against Israel. And listen, it has been, I, I don't know how many Palestinians have died in this war. 
And, I, and I'm not happy about one of them. I would prefer that we both live in peace. Do you understand? We were attacked on October the 7th in the most horrific way. And we responded in a way that our military leaders th thought was best. In or Do you understand? This dumb idea of proportionality. We'll get back to that in a minute. Like you're using, you know, they did this to you and now you're doing too much. That's not in proportion. The goal, the, 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 did America attack Iraq in proportion? Turns out Iraq didn't even have weapons of mass destruction. So it was zero to, to over 100,000 Iraqis died as a result of te Desert Storm. That, is that proportionate? You know, Russia right now is, they're killing their own people. It's disproportionate how many Russian soldiers are dying as opposed to Ukrainian supporters. Well, Ukraine, that is just not proportionate. That's just the dumbest logic. You're trying to save lives here. In war, you want to win so that you can... You're, you're, you're not fighting for the other team. You're fighting for your country. There's nobody. There's not one Hamas fighter who thinks that he has to play by rules. Who thinks that he has to play fair. They chopped women's breasts off while they were alive. You understand? The, 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 so do not hold Israel to some stupid... Standard of proportionality. By the way, do you know what proportional proportional response would be? The reason Israel would never embrace the idea of a proportional response is because it's it's cold blooded. It's cold blooded. That would mean that we would have to go find twelve hundred to fourteen Palestinian Palestinians and, and and kill them in, in the most gruesome ways. We would have to find a number of their women, and then our soldiers would would have to rape them. That this is that would be proportional. I mean, you, just to be clear, do not take cut pace. I would never. That, that's sick. That's sick. We are fighting to destroy Hamas, so October seventh can never happen again to us, and so the people of Gaza can be free. But is this deal a good deal, bad? Deal? Of course, it's a bad deal. The bad part of the deal is that we are pausing the fighting for four days. But we're human. That, 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 is, where, that is where they win the war. Is they, they understand that they don't care if their people die. And we care a lot if our people die. We care about our soldiers. We care about our citizens. And they're using that against us. And I just believe that God will see that and protect us and reward us. So what do we do? I've heard people say it's a bad deal. Israel shouldn't do it. Well, I, I mean, you tell that to the, the families of the 242 people. I mean, I get it. I understand. It's going to hurt us. It's going to put our soldiers in danger. But I love our soldiers. And they, they would take the deal. They would say... Put us in danger. Save the children. That, that, that would be their attitude. Every one of them. And so you have to do the deal. Yeah, it's going to make it harder for us. But the good news is that Hamas is on the run. They, they, um, they're losing. They're losing bad. They've lost control of the people. The people are now revolting against them. And they see this and they're going to use these four days to try and reestablish control. But hopefully, you know, folks in, in Gaza will say, uh-uh, it's over. It's over. And four days is, is, is ticking. And then Prime Minister Netanyahu said that, and then, or, or was it him or Gallant, our defense minister, that, and then there's going to be two months of continuing the operation. Which, and what is the goal? The liquidation, the elimination, the neutralization of Hamas as a military entity inside of Gaza. That's the goal. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a war guy. If you hear me, I've never, I've never shot a handgun in my life. I don't own one. I don't, I don't know, I've never been in combat. I don't get excited about war at all. What is happening to Palestinian children right now that, that, have, that have been wounded and have died is absolutely horrible. But it's not Israel's fault. Israel is, is again, go, rewind to se October the 7th. All right. And here's the thing. If you're going to say don't do the deal, let me just ask you this. Are you willing to go trade yourself for one of those hostages? Are you are you are you willing to allow one of your children
to exchange places with one. Well, it's an emotional. Yeah, we're emotional human being. That's the difference between us and Hamas. They love death. We love life. We love our people. So, you know, if you're willing to do that, you know, well, then you can make the argument it's a bad deal. If you're willing to go to Hamas and say, take me, release one of them, I'll be your hostage, then you can say it's a bad deal. But unless you're willing to do that, then don't say it. I mean, you can say it's a bad deal. It is a bad deal. I'm saying it's a bad deal, but it's a deal we must do. We must do because we must get our people back. Will we get all 242 back through negotiations? Probably not. Are we, are we gathering intelligence over the next four days? Absolutely. Nobody wanted to be in this position, but here we are. Uh, and by the way, that is a, a great way to pray. Two of the most powerful prayers in the Bible, one was by Moses and one was by Paul. When Moses comes down from the mountain, he finds Aaron in the golden calf and all that, and, and God is not happy. And he says, you know what, Moses, chapter 32, verse 32, I, I'm going to start over. I'm going to kill all these people. I'm going to start over and I'm going to make a nation with you, Moses. Verse 32, Moses says, no. If you do that, block me out. I want nothing to do with it. Now, my theological view of that is that God really wasn't looking to kill all those people, but he was, he was getting Moses to intercede at such a level that he would risk his own life for the life of the Israeli people, the Israelites, right? And it worked. In the same way, Paul in the New Testament you know, Paul loves the Jewish people. He, he loves his people. He wants to see them saved. And in, in chapter 9, he is so exercised. God, you listen, Paul could have had this private little prayer meeting anywhere. But it's recorded in the Bible for you and for me to read and to understand. And Paul says, um, I, I, I am, what I'm saying, I'm saying <clears throat> in the spirit, my, my conscience bears witness that I am not lying. Paul is about to say something so crazy that you might think he's lying. That that's so yeah, it's it's like my kids. You know, dad, you know, my kids are in the 30s, but once, you know, dad, this happened in the story that I know is not no, no, it's really true. So that's what kids do. Paul is the apostle writing the Bible. So if he's about if he's gonna use that same strategy of I'm not lying, really, this is the truth, then you gotta say, Oh, okay, that that's um I'm listening. I could wish myself accursed and cut off from the Messiah for the sake of my people, Israel. He says, I'm willing to go to hell to trade my salvation for the salvation of the Jewish people. Again, that is in the Bible for a reason. It's to get us to pray for Israel. But have you ever prayed that way for anyone? Where you say, God, I'm so burdened. For this person, maybe a family member. I am so burdened for this person, I would trade my salvation. Because those types of prayers, God really hears. They they move the heart of God. Because you're it's 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 the utter denial of self. And when one denies their self and takes up their cross to follow God, the Lord takes notice. So as you're praying for the hostages, if you can say, Lord, I would be willing to go instead. I would be willing to be taken if these children could be free. Then pray that. Because it moves the heart of God. Those types of prayers move the heart of God. And speak to the demonic spirit behind Hamas. Let God's people go. Just come in. There's about, I don't know how many people watching me. We're on two different platforms right now, but agree with me right now. Let, we speak to that demonic spirit behind Hamas and we say, let God's people go. Not just 13, not just 50, 242. Let them go. Return them home in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Okay, well... Let me just see if there's any more news. So praise the Lord. Take it. Take a moment. Just rejoice. Thank God. Thank you, Lord, that these 13 are free, that these 13, we don't know their condition. We don't. I'm just going to take a look here um, and see if there is any um, 
any more news. First group of Israeli hostages said to be in hands of the Red Cross on way out of Gaza. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. First group. The first group of Israeli hostages are now in the hands of the staff of the International Committee for Red Cross and are in ambulances on the way from Khan Yunus in southern Gaza, uh, going to the Rafa crossing into Israel. An Israeli official says, the families of the hostages are on their way to hospitals in Israel where they will be reunited later. Today's release of 13 hostages, mothers and children, is the first of four expected stages. Hamas has agreed to release some 50 hostages over four days of truce with Israel, of Israel, all, all children, mothers, and other women. Understand something. This has nothing to do with Hamas having a change of heart, having any type of goodwill, zero. They, they, they are evil, given over to the devil. They can be saved. Oh, I need to tell you something before we leave. It's going to blow your mind. They, they can be saved. They can repent. And we pray for that. God, Lord, reveal yourself to these terrorists. Let them, you know, Paul the Apostle was a terrorist before he got saved. He was a killer. Lord, we pray. God, we pray for revival in, in the ranks of Hamas in Jesus' name. Amen. But this is only because this is only for one reason. They're getting the stew beat out of them. They're running for their lives. They're hiding underground. They can't launch their rockets. Before we came to the States, and by the way, you might be wondering, Ron, how does it feel to be in America? I am conflicted like you cannot imagine. Like, I want to be home so bad right now. I want to be in Tel Aviv right now. I want to be at the at the art museum where all the families have gathered and some of them have lived there in tents. I want to be there so bad right now. I also recognize that Elon and I were so stressed out after working, you know, all day, every day for a month and a half that we, and I have parents here who I love and a daughter. I mean, I needed to be with my family for a little bit, but we're going to get back just as soon as we can. I don't announce dates and, in, in, in cities and things like that. Uh, but very soon we'll be on an airplane going back home, uh, and continuing to, to, to serve and to love, to love on soldiers, to love on survivors. So I want to tell you one more thing before we go. I saw this post yesterday uh, by another minister, and my first, my first response was uh, skepticism. Um, and <laughs> because there's so much fake news, and it just sounded, it sounded like fake news. So um, I went and did a little research and actually found out that it was true, at least it was true that this, there's a gentleman by the name of New Testament professor, and don't leave now, you want to hear this. New Testament professor Michael, uh, is it Licona or Lisona? I think Licona, uh, who is an expert in um, uh, witnessing, sharing with Muslims. And he, th so this is, this is a report he got from inside of Gaza. Again, he knows lots of Muslims because he, that, that's a part of his ministry. Over the past, this was, so I saw this yesterday. I don't know how old it is, but it's relatively new. Over the past two days, we have ministered to hundreds of fathers who have lost most, if not all, of their children in the war. As we moved these men to safety, we fed them, washed their clothes, and began to read the Bible to them. I don't know who we is. It's obviously believers in Gaza they're working with, or maybe a ministry. I don't know. Sharing the way of peace through Jesus with these, with these Muslims. Then a big miracle happened. Last night, Jesus appeared to more than 200 of them in their dreams. <sighs> Hallelujah. You can, see, you can see why I was skeptical. I thought it was, you know, because I'm getting text, you know, pray for us now. There's a uh, 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 rescue operation. And, and then you share it. And then you find out that it's fake. So I'm, I'm very skeptical. So before I post anything, I, I just check it out. And I found out that CBN was reporting it. And then I found out the name of the guy who released it and that he's a legitimate New Testament professor. And he says, Jesus has appeared to more than 200 of them in their dreams. They have come back to us to learn more from God's word and are asking how to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. And then this is uh, the professor, Michael Lacona. I side with Israel in this war, not necessarily for theological reasons, 
but because Hamas and those backing it are pure evil. Now, this is important. I'm going to come back to that statement in a minute. Yet, I know that not all Palestinians support Hamas. In fact, they will be punished severely if they are even suspected of not supporting Hamas. Let's pray that this war can be over soon and that Israel can, be, can eradicate Hamas so the Palestinians can be free of Hamas. You see, here's the ignorance by, you know, the VCU is Virginia Commonwealth University, typical university right near me here. There's going to be a, a big protest. It's either today or Sunday. And, you know, and, you know, Palestine will be free from the river to the sea. You know, they're going to be doing that. Or from the river to the sea, I got it backwards. They don't understand that the people in Gaza hate Hamas. Do you understand? Hamas is more popular outside of Gaza than it. Inside of Gaza, they're evil religious police dictators. But then you've got left-wing students on campuses, homosexuals, you know, queers for Palestine, people that they would gladly murder because of their lifestyle, defending them. So he says, I side with Israel in this war, not necessarily for theological reasons, but because Hamas and those backing it are pure evil. He, he, what he's saying is this New Testament professor who works sharing the gospel with Muslims. So I don't know if he's pro-Israel, anti, you know, sometimes when you work all the time with Muslims, it's easy to develop some very unbiblical attitudes towards Israel. I don't see that in this guy. I mean, I meet him one day, I'd like to interview him. But he's saying it's not a matter of, you know, the, the biblical, I can make the biblical case that God is with Israel. I mean, just the very fact that Israel is a nation is, is a miracle. No country's ever gone, you know, more than two or three generations without a homeland, without a, um, a, a, a geographical, physical homeland, without disappearing. It just, it's impossible. Israel did that for 2,000 years and then became a nation again and then has survived war after war. So yeah, I can make the biblical case that the promises that God made to Israel through Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Hosea, Zechariah, that, 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 that we're seeing that in the state of Israel today. I can easily make that. But let's say I couldn't. Just on grounds of the humanitarian grounds, Israel's not perfect, but they are righteous. Hamas is evil. Do you understand? There is one, there is a nation that is democrat, not perfect. And I could listen, I could go off for some people in our government that need to go. There's a guy in our government, he was, him and his group are the only ones to vote against this deal. And they're stirring up violence. And, and his name is Ben Gavir. And if you want to pray, pray for him to get, to be kicked out of the government. Because I truly believe that his presence, he's a racist, that his presence affected our covering. And I pray that Netanyahu will kick him out of the government. He should kick him. So listen, I'm not, I, I, Israel is not perfect. But we are a democratic nation. We have freedoms that they could never even dream of. And, God, and Hamas is evil, controlling the... This is a no-brainer. You know, Harvard, Yale, uh, and, you know, the other day Harvard released a God bless you president of Harvard who released a statement condemning anti-Semitism on the campus. And a hundred professors rebuked her for that. A hundred professors rebuked her for condemning anti-Semitism. I could go on so many crazy things around the world. But what, what do you expect? And that shows us as believers that this is a fight between good and evil. Again, Israel's not perfect. I, as an Israeli, you know, there's a prophetic thing in me that there's a few things I'd like to say to our government. Right? You know, but I love them. I love them. I, 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 you know, I'm so blessed to be a citizen of Israel. But it doesn't mean that I ignore when we do things that are wrong. America does things that are wrong. Like every other nation. Politicians tend to be often not the best people in the world. They're people who are willing to allow their lives and their families to be ripped open in order to ascend to power. Because we live in a day and age now where if you do anything bad, the media is going to find about it, out about it. So if you want to be president or vice president, or what, they're going to rip your life apart. So the people who are still willing to, to be in public office are people who are so hungry for power that they're willing to go through that process. I mean, you just look at the past two presidents and forget, forget anything. This is not a political statement, but just look how their lives, their sins, their everything has been exposed to the world. 
but one Republican, one Democrat. I can't even imagine going, I mean, you know, Hunter Biden, you know, if, if he, if, if, if Joe Biden doesn't run for president, we don't talk about what's on that laptop, which are the most embarrassing things I can't even imagine. And of course, you know, President Trump, everything he's going, again, I'm not defending either one of them and I'm not condemning it. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, look what one goes through when they, in, in, okay. Let's get back to this. Looks like there's a little revival going on in Gaza. Lord, we just pray right now that that would continue. We pray for these more than 200 Muslim men. Hey, by the way, former Muslim. There's a little typo there. It should say former Muslim men who have received Jesus because they had dreams of Yeshua in the nighttime. At the, in the same night. 200 men, more than 200 at the same night. Again, I, I wasn't there. All I can tell you is that there's a New Testament professor, Michael Lacona, who is saying that his people in Gaza or his friends in Gaza have sent him this report. And I believe it because I believe that we're in the end times, that these are birth pangs and that we're going to see light, darkness, revival, evil all together. And it's Friday. Shabbat is tonight. I'm so happy to be with my family in America. I still have two daughters in, in Israel. But I'm so happy to be with my middle daughter and her husband, with my mother, my father, my sister. Um, you can pray for Ilana. She's going through a little bit of back pain. Uh, yesterday she uh, woke up and, well, I should say a lot of back pain. And I think that is really a result of that we were in this just, you know, God gave us incredible grace, but just incredible stress for six weeks. And then when you come out of that, there, it's like your body, your adrenaline is is sustaining you. And then when you take a breath, it suddenly... So pray for her for healing in her lower back, if you don't mind. And um, again, we can't wait to get back. We can't wait to get home. And we're so happy for the families who are being reunited, you know, today, today with their children, maybe with their wives. You know, I don't know what they're coming home to, but it's, it's, it's a good day. It's a sad day because many of them will, will come home to find out that they don't have parents anymore but they're free. They're free. They're no longer under the control of Hamas. We need God. We just pray for the other 229 God. So, uh, Paul, the, I forgot the, the, was it 12 tie? So 217 God, 217, bring them home, bring them home. Machzirim, machzirim otam habaita achshav. Bring them home the big red word there is Akshav, and it means now, in Yeshua's name. Well, it's good to see you all. Uh, thank you guys for spending, I, I only, I didn't plan to be on this long. Whew. Hallelujah. Well, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you. Let, let, let them come home. More come home. And Father, we pray for the Israeli soldiers. We pray. Don't leave me now. Don't leave me now. Just finish up. Let's pray together. Most important part. Father, we pray for the Israeli soldiers who are being put in a more difficult situation because of this, because of this uh, deal, Lord God. We pray that you supernaturally protect them. Protect them, protect them in Yeshua's name. We pray for those coming home. Heal them, Lord God. Heal them from trauma, oh God. We pray for uh, uh, just joyous re reunification. Father, we pray for the innocent people in Gaza who don't want any part of this work, that you would protect them supernaturally. We pray for the revival that is beginning with the Muslim, these Muslim men and their families, oh God. Let that grow. Let a fire just take place within Gaza. Let this revival spread. Yes, there's been death. There's been carnage. But let it end in something good. Let it end in revival. Thank you, God. And Father, we do pray. We pray for Hamas in in. I think this is a right prayer. God, just you know, judge my heart. You know, eradicate them or save them. Eradicate them or save them. Nobody should have to live under dictatorship. No nation should have to live next to such evil, cold-blooded killers, oh God. We pray for revival within the ranks of Hamas, that we would start hearing testimonies and reports of Hamas leaders coming to Yeshua. Coming to faith in Messiah, oh God, in lower levels, mid-levels, every member. Let them repent of their sins, just like Paul. And we pray that for Jewish people all over Israel, Lord God, in Yeshua's name.
Amen. Okay, I'm going to... I'm gonna, one, one last thing I'm going to share with you. And if you wonder why I keep putting on my glasses and, and taking them off, it's because I cannot see. <laughs> I cannot see, you know, and the names pop up and I like to see who's watching. So uh, let me just say hi. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Karen. Hi, Bethany. Hi, uh, Joanne. Hi, Janine. Um, Sharon, that is my daughter's name. Emily, God bless you. Trina, good to see you. Marjam, God bless you. Um, just so good uh, to 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 see so many people watching and, and standing with Israel. Um, but I'm going to tell you one thing, one last thing. I don't have all the information on this, but we we had we canceled three tours. We had three tours planned for this summer, uh, for this spring, and obviously we we in their present state we could not bring people to Israel, and they and obviously they were canceling. You know. Uh, uh, but something happened uh, about right when this first started. Robbie Daw Dawkins, many of you know him. He is a, a powerful one-on-one -on -one evangelist, powerful evangelist, teacher, equipper of evangel. I mean, just in a, I, I love him. It, but more than all that, he's a dear human being. And he called me up and or texted me and said, "I want to come to Israel." And my first response was, um, I, "You know, a, a we're really busy, and I don't even know what I do with you. And B, are you nuts?" But he was persistent. So him and his wife, they came and we went, we visited soldiers, we prayed with, it was just a great time. And as we're, the, the week is progressing, we thought, well, why don't we do a tour? You know, and, but not your traditional tour. There are people, listen, I know the average Joe wants nothing to do with coming to Israel right now. I can tell you this, when I, I feel 100%, I am more concerned about being here where there's going to be a pro-Palestinian march right outside my house in the next, you know, either... Uh, in the next hour or so, or it's on Sunday. That concerns me more than when I am in Ashkelon, where I live, which is 10 minutes from Gaza. I feel, uh, you know, if we take out October the 7th and what happened, which was the worst day in the history uh, of the modern state of Israel, I feel completely safe in Israel. And I've been down near the front lines, you know, bulletproof vest, visiting soldiers, and I feel safe. And I, it, I just feel safe. Now, that may be just the grace of God on my life because I I'm, I'm not running to Ukraine and I'm I'm not running to Muslim dominated nations like uh, other people have grace for that I don't but I can't wait to get home to Israel and so we thought what if we did a tour last week of January four days of touring and four days of serving and we're right now trying getting in touch with different communities that have been affected and say how can we come serve can we clean houses you, you understand in some cases. Families who have been evacuated were in their safe room for 30 hours. Do you, do you know, you understand, there's no bathroom. So they were stuck in there. You can't imagine, you know, some, you don't want them to come home to that. And many of them are still, they haven't come home. Some whole kibbutzes are gone. They're gone. They, they burned down every house. There's nothing there. The needs are tremendous. And so we thought, you know, maybe there's 40 people that would want to come over, um, and, and, and we're going to give half of the proceeds to, to the need, to, you know, like we've been humanitarian aid in Israel. Um, so just keep it on the outlook. If, that, if that's something that interests you, keep looking out. I have a video that we're going to post today on Facebook and on Instagram with me and Robbie. I don't have a price. I just have the dates. It's going to be January 23rd through February 1st, eight days on the ground in Israel, um, it'll be first two days touring. We're going to do galley one day. So it won't, you, you won't get your full, full Israel tour. You're going to get much more connection with Israel. He's loving on them. And it's, it's a time, it's not a time uh, for preaching. It's a time for action. It's a time for, we're coming there to serve, to humble ourselves, to say, Israel, we love you. We love you. We're standing with you. We know that there's a lot of people around the world that don't like you, but we do. So keep your eye out on that. Go to roncantor.com. Make sure you've signed up for our emails. That Then you'll definitely get the information on that. And again, I understand this is not a tour for everybody. But if you do come, it's going to be the tour of a lifetime. It'll be it'll be far better than um, than uh, just your typical Israel tour. As much as that, listen, I love when people say, I don't want to do the typical. No, the typical Israel tour is awesome. You're talking about, you know, Galilee, the, the you know, the Golan Heights, Jerusalem, the history and if you have somebody who's you who's able to tell you the history and who lives there and and who has stories of of growing up there like my wife and me moving there it's great we have a lot of fun but this is going to be different 
And, and, and one of the neat things is it's, I don't know what the pricing is going to be, but it's going to be a five-star accommodations for four-star prices because it's empty. You, you know, the, the, the hotels that are full right now, they're full of evacuees. Mufanim, we call them. Evacuees. They don't have homes anymore or they can't go home. And so don't come because it's going to be a great deal, although it's going to be a great deal. Don't come because, you know, you're going to get to go on all the rides without the lines, although it will be like that because I don't know. I do know of one other tour. That's it. One other tour that I know of. Um, come because you love Israel, because you want to hug an Israeli, tell them you love them, because you want to weep with them, you want to cry with them, you want to be broken with them, and um, more details to come on that. All right, I'm going to go now. Have a great Shabbat. Bless you in the name of Yeshua. Shalom.